Hello everyone and welcome to Photo Finds, I'm your host Gavin Hatch. This week we're going to look at some new entertainment happening over at Disney's Animal Kingdom, but first let's go over to SeaWorld Orlando. Now it's been raining almost every day here in Central Florida. If you've been in the parks lately, you've noticed that you've probably had to bring an umbrella with you. So summer is approaching, that's that's for sure. Um, now when I first came into SeaWorld, we noticed that there is a new photo opportunity. They actually put a construction wall over um, what used to be here, which was a photo opportunity for the 50th anniversary. Um, they had the big logo that they used everywhere for that celebration that was going on. Now since the celebration has been over with for over a year, um, they pretty much just took that logo out and just put the Sea World logo in there, the generic logo, and then they added, um, they took out the Sea of Surprises tagline and added the word Orlando. So now it says Sea World Orlando, and it has their logo in the center. So they're still utilizing part of this um, structure that was used for the 50th anniversary uh, photo opportunity, but now it's just for Sea World Orlando. I think it looks great. It's it looks good right there. It's a great backdrop. I like how it's in the front of the park. Um, they do have a queue set up because I'm sure in the mornings a lot of people are lining up to go ahead and get their photo taken right there. And they do have um, team members there that take photos for you. Now right next to that is the SeaWorld Rescue Store. Now this store has been open for over a year, but recently they had construction walls covering up the very front of it. It was open while it was under construction, but they were removing an entire wall. There used to be a front wall here that you'd see when you're coming into the park, and that wall allowed you to take a photo there. They had like a little backdrop, and they also had a digital signboard there that showed the number of animals that SeaWorld has rescued. Now that sign has been removed, the, the numbers have been removed, and that entire wall was taken out recently, and just last week they finally removed the construction walls, and so that wall was taken out, and now this store is a lot more open, you can see that you can just walk on in, and there's a few steps there, and the store still is selling the same merchandise, so nothing really has changed inside the store, it's just a lot more open now, and I'm sure they're getting more business just because you can see it a lot clearer. Uh, so I don't know exactly why they did that, I don't, I'm not against it, but at the same time it was kind of cool seeing that digital sign there every time you came in and seeing how many animals they have rescued. So I wonder if they'll bring that back and put it somewhere else in the park, uh, but it was kind of cool and this is still looking really nice, it's a great store. Now over towards the back of the park in Shark Wreck Reef, the new themed area for the Mako Coaster, there is a lot of progress going on here. It is not completely done yet, uh, everything will be done hopefully on June 10th when Mako does officially open to the public, but walking through here the other day, I definitely noticed a lot of progress. For example, the Shark Encounter attraction has now uh, got its official sign put in place, and if you look to the left here by the on the signage, there's wires hanging out. So, and you see lots of wires hanging out behind different things in this uh, in this area because they're still putting it all together. Now, guests can't touch them, so it's not a safety concern. But you can tell they're still putting in lots of elements such as sound and lighting. Uh, lots of the lighting hasn't even been put in yet. I'm sure this is going to look really cool at night, but so far, it's you can still see wires hanging out of weird odd in places um, and it's going to look good at night though I'm sure once they get it all finished and so that was not the only thing. They've also added these hands-on and interactive things around the land that teach you about different species of sharks and what they like to eat and their sizes and where you can find them around the world and just all kinds of different informational things. You know, SeaWorld's always really good about teaching and educating uh, both young and old about the world that we live in, the animals that we share it with. And so they definitely are going to be doing that here in this realm uh, of the park. And it, it looks really good. I'm sure they're still adding different elements to it and there's going to be a lot more uh, education. The whole, when, when you look at this area now, um, it's very open. It's very open. Um, so you have the store, you have Shark Encounter, you have the restaurant, and you have Mako a little further down. It's all very open, so I wonder if they're going to add more things to just kind of make it feel a little bit more cozy um, and also just more interactive for our guests and also so they can learn more. Now the gift store that is across from the Shark Encounter reopened recently and I was hoping that this store would be completely gutted and redone and really themed like very well with Mako. And I was disappointed when I walked in, it was just very, very plain. Um, they repainted it, it looks good but it's just, it's not, it's just merchandise, merchandise, merchandise. Not a lot of storytelling going on in here and this whole land is going to look really good and I just wish the store went along with it. So it is something that um, 
you know, if you want to go get some air conditioning and also look at some merchandise that they sell all around the park, they have it in there. But this also is the place where you can go get the specifically made items for Mako. Uh, the Mako coaster will have items uh, being sold in here and Guy Harvey uh, teamed up with SeaWorld and now his merchandise is being sold in here as well. Right across from the store, they have a new structure put in place, so it is going to be a face painting area. So you can go get your face painted here, also caricatures done, and this is kind of neat. They did a really good job with this, and it kind of looks like a, almost like a sunken ship, and uh, it looks cool. It's really neat. Now, going further, you can see right here, Mako is really taking shape and the construction walls are down. But first, let's take a look here. Guy Harvey painted this mural himself. Uh, I think it was just last week he was here, or maybe two weeks ago, and he finished this mural and it's beautiful. Uh, so it's right here on the side of the building by the restrooms um, as you're making your way towards the entrance of the coaster. All right, so this was the first day that the construction walls were down over at Mako. So they had team members standing out there answering questions and telling guests that the coaster was running, but not for guests, it was still being tested. And it was really neat to see though. So some main things that really kind of grabbed my attention as I was looking at this and walking around the area is that the uh, lockers first are very close to the entrance, like very close. Uh, most, most of the time you see lockers for attractions kind of a distance away. That way it doesn't cause a lot of congestion right there at the entrance for the team members. And they put the lockers really close. Uh, you can tell that the store, even though the store is not open, there will be a store that you exit through. And that's probably gonna just have all Mako merchandise and I'm excited to see that and how that looks in there. Hopefully that's really themed. Um, but the entrance overall does look pretty good. The Mako sign though does look very small, uh, especially compared to the concept art. So it is a small sign. Uh, I do like the wait time sign though. That's really well themed. It looks like the side of a ship against all sunken ship. And I'm just really surprised of how fast they got this done because I remember not even two weeks ago looking through the little peepholes of the construction wall and seeing just there was no concrete in here yet so they put this down just probably days ago and so it was really fresh and it does look like the the queue is all outdoors I, I again haven't walked through here yet so I don't know but it looks like most of it is outdoors and there's not a lot of coverage so that's another thing that really kind of grabbed my attention is that there's not a lot of coverage for the outdoor queue but overall, it's, it looks like it's gonna work. Uh, again, the main thing that I was just really surprised by was how close the lockers are, also the amount of lockers. It didn't look like there was a lot of them. So I wonder if people are gonna have an issue with not being able to get a locker for this attraction. Uh, but yeah, I know they're gonna stress getting those, but I wonder if there will be enough. If you're watching this video on YouTube, in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on Mako. All right, so this past weekend, the Jungle Book, Alive with Magic, premiered at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now, since its premiere, it has been a lot of talk online on all the different theme park blogging websites, and a lot of people have been definitely voicing their opinions about this new show. Now, this, of course, was supposed to be where the Rivers of Light show was supposed to take place, and that has been delayed. It's still going to be coming out to Disney, but it is just delayed. And the Jungle Book movie was very successful, had a great storyline and great visual effects that they decided to go ahead and use this space that has been built. This amphitheater is absolutely beautiful over here on Discovery River, and they're using that space to their advantage of doing a show based on the Jungle Book. Now, I am not a tough critic. I, I love anything entertainment, so I really enjoy, when I go see a show, I'm all about the performers instead of the special effects, and these performers were giving it everything. They had so much energy, and the music was really good. I loved the music. It was a mix of a track as well as actual live musicians, and they have different barges, so everyone was seeing a different group of performers, and they're all telling the same story though, and it was just, it was like multiple stories, and it was just great, and it was just wonderful lighting, and the visual effects, the screens that they use out in the water to project onto were great as well, and clear, I didn't have any issue kind of seeing what I was looking at, I could tell. And I was in the very front row, so I didn't have the best view of that screen in the projections, but I tell you what, I had the best view of these performers that were just doing a great job. So I'm really excited to go ahead and shut up and let y'all hear it for yourself, because since I was in the front row, I had really loud speakers in front of me that actually turned out really well here on camera. So I'm gonna let you guys have a listen and also see some of these great performers do their thing. And uh, yeah, take a look. Just 
recipes that brings the bare necessities of life. Now, if you pick a pawpaw or a prickly pear, and you desire is man's red fossil, I can be like you. Give me the secret man cup, just clue me what to do. Give me the power of man's red flower and make my dreams come true. Oh, be do. I wanna be like you. I wanna walk like you. Now let's talk about this music because those vocals that you hear were live. They were, it was so funny because halfway through the show I realized when they asked the audience how we were doing tonight and make tell us to make some noise and how, that's when I realized that there were actual people singing these songs. I thought it was a track at first. Their voices were that good and the audio was that clear. So it was a really cool experience seeing these three vocalists out there in the center of the lake uh, singing and just doing a phenomenal job. And it's just, it was a very fun show. Now this is something that I, we had fast passes for. Uh, so let me tell you about that. The fast pass system was great. It was very, very efficient. Uh, we got into a place, a holding area over by uh, the River Rapids attraction, and then they just walked us over and escorted us to the amphitheater. And we had plenty of seats to choose from, plenty of seats. So it was something that, uh, I'm glad that we had fast passes for it because I know people were lining up hours in advance for the standby line, but I think that even had some extra seats if, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't really look over there, but it was uh, very well done. The theater looks great. Uh, the performers are fantastic, and it is a fun show with great music, and it's an, a nice nighttime offering. And when you're there, check it out. Well, that will do it for this week's photo finds. Until next time, make sure you guys subscribe to Attractions Magazine. And of course, make sure that you get out, have fun, and enjoy the parks.